A very good morning. Welcome to worship today across Beckles Parish. And if you're joining us via our YouTube channel online, it's great to have you with us today. We're really pleased to welcome um, to speak at our service today, the Archdeacon of the Venerable Jeanette Carlson. It's great having Jeanette with us. Faithful one, whose word is life, come with saving power to free our praise, inspire our prayer, and shape our lives for the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. So our first song this morning is, Great is the darkness that covers the earth. Continue on our service sheet. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Blessed are you, Lord our God, creator and redeemer of all. To you be glory and praise forever. From the waters of chaos you drew forth the world, 
and in your great love fashioned us in your image. Now through the deep waters of death, you have brought your people to new birth by raising your son to life in triumph. May Christ your light ever dawn in our hearts as we offer you our sacrifice of thanks and praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. And this morning we'll use the words of the Jubilate after we've done the confession. So I'll go straight from the confession into the Jubilate. The gospel calls us to turn away from sin and be faithful to Christ. As we offer ourselves to him in penitence and faith, we renew our confidence and trust in his mercy. Let's just take a moment to bring to mind the things that we're sorry for this morning. And then Mark will lead us in the confession. O King enthroned on high, filling the earth with your glory, holy is your name, Lord God Almighty. In our sinfulness, we cry to you to take our guilt away and to cleanse our lips to speak your word through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon each one of us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in the power of your spirit and keep us in life eternal through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So we say the Jubilate all together. O oh, be joyful in the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is gracious, his steadfast love is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Glory, Glory to, the to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. We now have our Bible readings. Andrew brings us our Old Testament, and then Mark will read. Uh, passage from John for today. The Old Testament reading is from Jeremiah chapter 31 and beginning at verse 31. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand and led them out of Egypt, because they broke my command, the covenant, though I was a husband to them, declares the Lord. This is the covenant that I will make with the people of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer will they teach their neighbor to, or say to one another, know the Lord, because they will all know me from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sin no more. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is taken from John chapter 12, reading verses 20 to 33. Now there were some Greeks among those who went up to worship at the festival. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, with a request. Sir, they said, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went to tell Andrew. Andrew and Philip, in turn, told Jesus. Jesus replied, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. 
Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Anyone who loves their life will lose it, while anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant also will be. My father will honour the one who serves me. Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, it was for this very reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven, I have glorified it, and will glory it again. The crowds that were there and heard it said it had thundered. Others said an angel had spoken to him. Jesus said, this voice was for your benefit, not mine. Now is the time for judgment on this world. Now the prince of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to show the kind of death he was going to die. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks to be to God. Then we hand over to Jeanette. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, as we reflect on your word this morning, help us to see you, to see Jesus, and to be filled with the hope and the love that you give us through your spirit, that we might truly follow him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we're in Lent, and we're in lockdown. And I don't know about you, but it's getting a bit tedious. It's going on a bit, isn't it? We're getting a bit fed up. We're probably getting rattier with each other and impatient and, and Lent calls us to repent. And to, there are times when I think I don't need to be told all the time to repent and to, to feel guilty. I just want, I want some hope. I want something to lift me up. I want God. So today, I thought, I'm going to focus on God. I hope you don't mind, in a sermon, focused on God. It's Passion Sunday, and we're called to look to Christ, called to look to the one who gives us hope. But I want to start back in that reading that we had from Jeremiah, which is a fabulous reading. It's one of those purple passages in Jeremiah, isn't it? Because I don't know, as you listen to it, whether you could hear the heart of God, the sadness of God, the longing of God. We've got a God there who is looking at his people, the people of Israel, the people of Judah, with a deep, deep longing for relationship with them. And what does he say? I've got to do something about this. I can't go on like this. This is a God who is an initiator, who doesn't sit back but says, I need, I want relationship with this people. They are my people. So listen, he says four things. I will make a new covenant. I will put my law within them, in their minds and their hearts. I will be their God. I will forgive. God is a God who is active and initiating relationship and change. He's prepared to change because things have gone wrong. He is, after all, our creator God, who didn't create once, but is forever creating and renewing and refreshing. So to go back even further, back in the time of Moses, he'd given them a new law a new covenant, a new relationship, tablets of stone. This is the way that you can, relate, you can relate to me, you can be in relationship. And they'd messed up. So we get to this passage in Jeremiah. 
where God says, OK, tablets of stone and the law just on tablets of stone is not working. So I'm going to actually write it in your hearts and minds. It's going to become part of your DNA. A new covenant, a new relationship. You will know me. And he's talking, of course, not just to individuals, but to the people, the community, the people of Israel and Judah. And he's actually saying, if you follow my law that is now deeply in your hearts and on your minds, you will live in justice. You will care for the poor, the widow and the orphan because that's who I am. And that's what my law is asking of you. But you will do it because it will be part of your DNA. Yesterday, I was at Diocesan Synod. When I say I was at Diocesan Synod, I was on Zoom at Diocesan Synod. So was Rich and I suspect some of you might have been too. And part of the presentation there was about being political with a little p, not a capital P. How can we be political? Because we are called to be political. As God's people, to care for people. That's what being political is about, to engage. We've just sung at the beginning that song, great is the darkness that covers the earth. The sadness of God as he looks at his world the oppression, the injustice and the pain. How can we, as God's people who have God's heart within us, love God's world and be political, be agents of change to bring about transformation? We've done lots of things and I know you have. You've done a fantastic job in caring for people who are coping with poverty, in different ways, food poverty, struggling with, with education, schools at home, isolation, mental ill health, all sorts of things. And the, we've done a huge amount to engage. But somehow as God's people, we need to challenge the deep injustices that cause these things to happen. The food banks and the other things we do treat the symptoms, but how can we challenge the things that lie beneath. God says, be my people. You have my law in your hearts. Be political. So that's what God said to his people, to Jeremiah's time. This is what I'm going to do. I will forgive your iniquity. I will restore you. I don't know whether you know the, the song from Iona, I love Iona, that starts, behold, behold, I make all things new. My promise is true and starting from today. Behold, behold, I make all things new, beginning with you, for I am Christ the way. That's what God's heart is longing for that he is in such close relationship with us that we can engage and transform his world. But you know, it went wrong again, didn't it? The tablets of stone didn't work. God and this new covenant that he said through Jeremiah, he would put his law in people's hearts. It still didn't work. But God hadn't changed. God still wants relationship. So what did he do? He gave us Jesus. For God so loved the world that he gave us his only son. God reaching out with a person, a human being that we could see who would show us the way who would show us God's heart, who would show us God's love and God's longing, God's grief for the world. Jesus, the new covenant. And Jesus, of course, was political. 
Think about all the stories in the gospel, the Jesus who cares for the outcast, the socially excluded, the powerless, and those with no voice, the women, the children, the poor, the leper. But Jesus as well, who challenged the authorities, who challenged those underlying injustices, challenged the status quo. Because Jesus was at one with the Father. Jesus had the heart of the Father. Jesus, who lived not for himself, but lived that others might live, who offers forgiveness, just like his father. And who, as that reading tells us, was prepared to give up his life on the cross in order to draw people back to relationship with God. Listen to his words. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all people to myself. God never stops reaching out to us, does he? Never. And as we look to the cross, so we see God reaching out to draw all people to himself. God constantly seeking new relationship. God constantly saying, come, be my people, know me. You know, those disciples went to Jesus and they said, we want to see Jesus. To be in relationship with God, to know Jesus, to have the heart of God within us, to know his forgiveness and his call to follow. And that is challenging. There is challenge there. There is a call on our lives that we lose ourselves, but we find ourselves anew in him. That we have that renewing, refreshed relationship, the heart of God beating within us. And through the power of his spirit, we can then be sent out. But at the heart, it has to be, look to the cross, look to Jesus. So this Passion Sunday, when we are invited specifically to look at the cross, when we turn more consciously towards the, the next two weeks, culminating in Good Friday and of course, Easter Sunday, this Passion Sunday, maybe I can invite us to spend time reflecting on Jesus, his life given for all. His life lived politically with the heart of God, with that desire for relationship and transformation. So as I finish, let me remind you again of that Iona song. Maybe we can use it as a prayer and respond to it by saying, so be it, Lord. So be it in my life and in the life of our community. Behold, behold, I make all things new, beginning with you and starting from today. Behold, behold, I make all things new. My promise is true, for I am Christ the way. So be it, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jeanette. As we continue to reflect on Jeanette's words to us this morning, let's um, reflect with the song into the arms of love. I sing a simple song of love to my Saviour, to my Jesus. I'm grateful for the things you've
we've done My loving Savior, oh precious Jesus My heart is glad that you've called me your own And there's no place I'd rather be than in your arms you've called me your own. There's no place I'd rather be than in your arms of love. Than in sheets and affirm our faith. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And Claire leads us in our prayers. So let us pray. Loving God, we pray for your church, that it may be a gateway for people to encounter your presence and glory. Help us as we seek to make your love known in the community so that people may experience the transformation to their lives that you can make. Help us as a church to be good stewards of your creation and to remember our responsibility as co-creators with you. Help us to be agents of change. 
as we walk the way of the cross this passion tide may our lives bear witness to your glory lord in your mercy hear our prayer loving god we pray for those in authority that all may lead with integrity and wisdom and seek justice and peace. And we pray especially for the safety of people of Myanmar and for a return of democracy. And we pray for the people of Yemen living in desperate circumstances. May our government have a change of heart and reverse the cut in foreign aid urgently. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our community of Beckles, Whirlingham, North Cove and Barmby. May all homes be places of kindness, patience, love, and security. We pray for victims of abuse, for those who have experienced bullying. We pray for the healing of all relationships. We pray for our schools, for businesses, and for the medical practice and care homes be with all the staff in their practicalities of ensuring that these places are COVID secure and help them in these challenging times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are bowed down by debt, loneliness, anxiety and illness. We ask you take the weight of the burden and fill people with encouragement, comfort and hope so that they can look forward to life with you in all its fullness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are dying this day, that they may be aware of your presence. And we pray for those who have recently died. And ask that you look with compassion on all who mourn, especially as their grief has been increased through the restrictions imposed by the pandemic. Equip us to bring your light and love into all the dark places. Merciful God, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And the collect for this fifth Sunday of Lent. Most merciful God, who by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, delivered and saved the world, Grant that by faith in him who suffered on the cross, we may triumph in the power of his victory through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Thank you, Claire. Um, I'll ask Mark to lead us in the prayer of dedication. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, 
a light to our paths and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And our final hymn today just helps us to keep focused towards the cross and to Christ when I survey the wondrous cross. final prayer of blessing. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now the exciting bit, the Archdeacon will love this, some notices, um, and there are a few, so get ready, fasten yourselves in. Um, firstly, I just want to say, um, thank, I want to say thank you to Phil Perry, and um, I know Phil's on this morning, um, Phil has managed our website for years, mm -hmm. um, and has recently handed that on um, to the parish office, and I'm really grateful to Phil for all he's done over the years in helping us communicate what we do as a church. Can we just show Phil our appreciation? And in the transit, Phil's helped with a transition to a new site. Um, and that's all the work on that has been done. Um, I'll say this, I got it wrong at 9.30. 99% by Ellie and 1% by Johnny. Johnny's been the person that's talked about widgets and things like that. But um, Ellie's done a huge amount of work and I'm grateful for those who have supplied stuff for the website. Um, on Tuesday, it is the National Day of Reflection a year on from the first lockdown. Our 10 o'clock communion service at All Saints Whirlingham will focus on this. And then at between 12 and one at St. Michael's, there will be um, a time for the, to mark the national silence at 12 noon and then some prayers and some music for an hour and an opportunity to light a candle. So 10 o'clock at All Saints Whirlingham on Tuesday or 12 till one at St. Michael's. 
In last week's mailing, we sent out everything we're doing for Holy Week, both across our churches and with Hungate Church. And we've added two more things in. So next Sunday afternoon, Palm Sunday in the afternoon at three o'clock, um, there's going to be Stations of the Cross at St. John's Barmby. Um, so a quite reflective time focusing on um, the images that we've used before from the Benedictine Sisters of Turvey Abbey, three o'clock at St. John's next Sunday. And then on Holy Saturday, Maria is going to be uh, have some installations of words, prayers, poetry at St. Luke's between 10 and 2, as we kind of think about and reflect on um, Christ being in the tomb and think about death and dying and remember loved ones. So between 10 and 2 at St. Luke's on Holy Saturday. Next Sunday, we return to public worship in our buildings, 9 o'clock BCP Communion at St. Michael's, 9.30 All Age Worship at St. Luke's, and 11 o'clock Holy Communion at St. Michael's. Um, if you got a Palm Cross in your mailing last week, bring that with you when it comes to blessing Palm Crosses. Um, we'll have spares if you <laughs> haven't got one, and there'll be some in church as well, but bring them to church with you next week. If you're coming to St. Michael's at 11 o'clock, please bring this order of service with you, the Holy Communion in church and at home. That's what we're going to be using the 11 o'clock for the next few months. Apart from, I'm going to confuse you now, on Easter Day, there's a separate one, but it says Easter Day. Um, but most Sundays, when it's communion at St. Mark's at 11, we're using that. And if it's morning worship, we'll use the same sheet as what we've been using on Zoom for the last few weeks. Easter Day, 6 a.m. This is my last notice, then I'll shut up. Easter Day, 6 a.m., um, we've got our usual... Um, Easter sunrise service on the terrace at St. Michael's with bonfire. We'd usually follow that with um, Serena, Felicity and others providing an amazing big breakfast. We can't do that this year, but we are going to offer a takeaway bacon roll and takeaway coffee <laughs> after the service. So if you'd like to have one of those, um, there's a sign up sheet going to be at the back of St. Luke's and St. Michael's from tomorrow, or you can email the office and just put your order in. Please particularly tell us if you've got any special dietary requirements, <laughs> but you'll get some kind of breakfast roll and a hot drink to take away from the service on Easter day. But you need to be at the service for 6 a.m. and enjoy that first. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't just turn up for breakfast. We're not that mm -hmm. going. Um, huge thank you to Jeanette for being with us. Um, we're, we, we thank you, Jeanette, for all you do in your role as Archdeacon. Um, and these lot don't see you very often. You see me far too much. Um, <laughs> we're really grateful for all that you do in your role and keep you in our prayers um, as you um, share your ministry across the Archdeacon and Diocese. You can all unmute yourselves and say goodbye. Bye, bye, bye everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.